more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Yo, top billing. Your boy Jersey Murph here to bring light to your darkness. <laughs> All right, so listen. Obviously, a controversial topic with my video, uh, which was a Jake Bobo film study, I think, which was lost on people. And the title, Just Wondering If His Presence Makes Dennis Rodman Jr. Himself, DK Metcalf, Expendable. So I go through a list of things, right? First of all, you get all these people here, right? People are lazy as in these days, you'll see some people read a title and go and, and just answer the question, right? Like, is that damn easy? This is a video platform. Watch the videos, man. If you're going to comment on the video, it's a video comment section. So comment on that video of what you see. So I talked about the presence of Jackson Smith and Jigba, right? Eventually, in my opinion, the number one wide receiver for Seattle. First round draft pick. God destroyed college football. I'm talking about huge games against viable competition. He's a high volume guy in this day and age. He's a guy that can get you 1,800 yards, right? Straight up. He's very much reminiscent of a Cooper Cup or someone like that. So I talked about that with the presence of, of course, Tyler Lockett, a veteran now who can do uh, a lot of different things, right? Obviously, he can go and get it with the best of them, right? The Lockett launchers going downfield, um, great hands, uh, the sideline magic stuff, great route runner and all that there. And then you add in the presence of two tight end sets. Eat at Geno's, Geno Smith, right? Likes to spread the ball around to tight ends there. Um, or spread the ball around, period, but definitely loves to target the tight end. You have running backs who catch the ball out of the backfield and all this. And then you add in a cat like Jake Bobo, who can do a lot of the things Jackson Smith and Jigba can do, but in a larger frame. We see him with the 50-50 exchange situation, go up and get the ball. He has electrifying hands, route running ability, extraordinarily really good, right? Extraordinarily good as a route runner, can do all these things right here. That's the, the entire thing is what makes, my opinion, somebody like DK Metcalf expendable. But no, people just wanted to make it a Jake Bobo versus DK Metcalf thing, which is dumb as hell. And it just shows how people are just pretty dumb out there, right? That's why you can't have a civilized conversation with people these days. Not everybody, right? It's just a certain pocket of people. I will admit that, right? Because they already have something made up in their mind and then you're not going to be able to actually present things to them and have them follow along with that. But so obviously, I don't know if this sparked different stuff or people talking about it and shit. Like I mentioned T.O. in the comment section. I'm like, even a guy as great as T.O. was traded. Even a guy as great as Randy Moss was traded. Uh, throughout the history of the league, you can find all kinds of wide receivers who were traded. A.J. Brown was traded. Think about that. A.J. Brown was traded. D.K. Metcalf, I said it before, very good receiver, right? I always say he's, what, 7 to 10-ish or something like that? So we're going to go through here because somebody sent me uh, this thing right here, and they were comparing D.K. Metcalf's first however many years to T.O.'s. To and I'm thinking to myself, like, the fuck out of here, man. Are you talking to top billing up in here? You can't do me with one of these goofy ass Twitter conversations. Leave me out of them shits. Don't tag me in none of them goofy conversations and all that. They don't even make sense. They don't make sense to anybody with some actual football prowess. Why would you compare somebody from 1996 to somebody playing in the 2020s? It's a different era of football. The defenses back then alone were nasty. You talk about having to go through some legitimate press coverage. People don't even press these days. It's close quarters coverage, off bell. Uh, you got vertical, a lot of vertical bell situations. The defense is definitely throughout the rules now is geared towards more offensive football. They want to attract the casual fan, which is cool because it's the business and points bring about casual fans, right? You know what I'm saying? People want it. It's the same thing in basketball. Back in the day, you're going to tell me that uh, people having to go through the Detroit Pistons and all these defensive teams. Back then, all the teams were defensive teams. A lot of the superstars in the NBA were defensive players. These days, you don't find anybody playing any defense. 
So, yeah, you might score more points than Allen Iverson, right? But you ain't better than Allen Iverson, and he was doing it against great defensive players. So, my man having more stats than T.O., the fuck's that supposed to mean to anybody with, with an actual brain? Way different. And T.O. was playing on Jerry Rice's team. Is he supposed to outdo Jerry Rice coming into the league from some from some um, college nobody ever heard of? The greatest wide receiver of all time is already. And he was still playing very well at the time in 1996, right? That was in their Super Bowl uh, run. so Or they were at least still in the hunt for the Super Bowl. So think about that. So this is what I say. If you really want to know DK Metcalf and, and his standing now, which I said before, very good player. Somebody said he's a once every 20 year player. How, Sway? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. You got to compare him to his contemporaries right now. Compare him to his peers. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Check this out right here. All right, so with anything, with any kind of stat, it's not going to be an apples to apples comparison. But what I will say is, I tried to get this as close as possible. DK Metcalf's in his fifth year, and he has four complete seasons, right? So the fifth year, uh, five or six games, or however many games he played there. So I was trying to get everybody around 70 games, because DK Metcalf has 71 games. Only Cooper Cup had the same amount of games in that time period. So it's the first five seasons for DK Metcalf minus the rest of this season there. And some of these guys I had to kind of play it around with, but it's still their first handful of seasons. Now, if you can see here, right, for somebody to be a once in every, a once every 20 year draft pick, just because he's big and fast, that ain't got shit to do with anything, man. This is not the Olympics. This is football. It's a sport. You don't have to be big and fast to be a damn animal. Jerry Rice was not big and fast and was a damn animal. These Some of these guys right here aren't, none of these guys are as fast as DK except Tyreek Hill, but they're all animals, right? And to me, they're all better than DK Metcalf. With that being said, keep it in context. That's not saying DK Metcalf isn't the truth himself. That's just showing you how Football is in this day and age. To me, wide receivers are like a dime a dozen, to be honest with you, right? Not saying these guys aren't great. The defenses suck. I'm sorry. I'm a cat that grew up, you know what I'm saying, in the 80s. Uh, the defenses today absolutely suck. I played football my whole life. We was all about beating defenses. Nowadays, it's just about what can you do on offense to further the game. Like, it's a whole different way of going about it. But if we see right here. DK Metcalf has 328 receptions for 4,555 yards, 37 touchdowns. Now, the best wide receiver out of all these guys to me is between Justin Jefferson and my dude from them Eagles, A.J. Brown. Those are the top two wide receivers to me, along with Tyreek Hill. Can't maybe many eyes would you probably could put Tyreek Hill above both of those guys as well, right? So it, it's an arms race. These guys are all very close to each other. These are just the guys who popped off my head at this particular point in time right here. You only have so many slots you can do this. So look at this. In the same amount of time, just look at Cooper Cup right here. Cooper Cup has a thousand more yards in the same amount of games as DK Metcalf. He has 40 touchdowns, right? Cooper Cup, not big, not fast, right? He's a pretty decent-sized guy, not fast, not all that shit. What he does is he understands how to play this sport. He's working inside out, great hands, great route runner, and all that. To me, this dude right here, Justin Jefferson, represents another level, and I told people. I told people straight up. They didn't want to listen to me. Damn, I forgot Jamar Chase. <laughs> Hold up. Through the magic of television, I'm back. <laughs> right? Jamar Chase still won't be on here, but he'll be on this next segment. So and he only has, obviously, two years and a handful of games, so he's way different than DK Metcalf. But you can see how he's trending and how great he is that you can't say that DK Metcalf is better than him. If you're a once every 20-year once draft pick, shouldn't you be better than everybody? Stats is one thing. I go by analysis, right? People, a lot of his people, right, will try to say he has great hands or or good enough hands if you look at the catch percentage. A lot of those things are easy catches. What happens when it's the more difficult catches there? 50-50 balls and shit where people raking all over you. That's where some of these guys excel at. 
they're not going to be called a drop, but you can tell the hand-eye coordination in people is like, if it's not perfect, you got somebody on them, is he going to catch the ball? But Cooper Cup here. But look at Justin Jefferson. He has 5,300 yards to DK Metz cast, 4,000, and he has 16 less games. 360 catches to DK Metcalf's 328. Cooper Cup has 433 catches in the um, in the same in the same time frame, right? So are you gonna say he's targeted more or whatever like that? It is what it is. If you open, they're gonna get you the ball. So it ain't like Cooper Cup wasn't playing with um Robert Woods and all these guys and playing in the same exact offense that DK Metcalf plays in as well, which makes me think a guy like Shane Waldron coming from that system there, if Jackson Smith and Jigba was elevated to be the number one receiver, you're going to see some damn good production from him. He's buried. He's the third wheel in that. He has two veterans in front of him. You can't fault Jackson Smith and Jigba for that, for them not being able to work him in. But you saw when DK Metcalf was gone, he was able to be elevated to the number two role, and you saw him produce. So look at Tyreek Hill here, 5,300 yards, him and – but he's a lot more games. But look at him trending from Justin Jefferson, right? <laughs> he has 19 more games, yet Justin Jefferson has more yards. Justin Jefferson is an animal. This guy right here, A.J. Brown. People asked me before if I thought that D.K. Metcalf was better than A.J. Brown. And I said this shit for way before you guys ever knew who I was. I showed you. I worked camps where A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf were in together at high school. A.J. Brown has always been the best receiver that I saw in high school. And in college, he's the best receiver. Him and Justin Jefferson, I put a list. They were my top two wide receivers in the SEC over that their time period, their era there. And that's out of a whole lot of people there. So 5,300 yards from him in four less games than D.K. Metcalf. He catches everything. I don't give a damn if you have you can have two hands on the ball. AJ Brown is going to come away with that catch. He's in, he's just a different animal. While he doesn't have that time speed as DK Metcalf, he plays as fast as DK Metcalf. Look at his yards per catch. He has 16 yards per catch for his career. DK Metcalf's 13.9. All right, Tyreek Hill 14.6. This dude's a freak, man. A.J. Brown is, to me, is on another level. You can't be once in that once every 20-year cat and A.J. Brown exists in your era. Cooper Cup exists in your era. Justin Jefferson exists in your era. Tyreek Hill and these guys. Michael Thomas, a high-volume guy, the original Cooper Cup to me, right? Look at him. Before he got injured, he was trending to be the greatest receiver in the history of the league. He had 510 receptions in one less game than D.K. Metcalf. 5,900 yards, almost 6,000 yards and one less game than DK Metcalf. <laughs> 510 receptions, man. This guy catches everything as well. He understands how to set himself up, and he's dog slow. He's one of the slowest receivers that I've seen, period. It does not matter. This is not, right? For speed is just one aspect that you can have. That doesn't make you a great player. Come on. Now look at this list right here. Some of you people probably never heard of Terry McLaurin. He came in DK Metcalf's draft. Look at that. He's played one less game than DK Metcalf. He's had some of the sorriest quarterback play, but McLaurin is as fast as DK Metcalf. I believe they run the same exact time there. He's smaller, but he has more yards than him. He has more catches. And DK Metcalf played with the artist formerly known as Seattle starter, who was one of the best quarterbacks in the league and played to DK's skill set with those you know what I'm saying? Those moon balls and all this shit like that. You may not like the dude now, but you can't front that he was a great quarterback and the greatest quarterback in Seattle Seahawks history there. Terry McLaurin never had that. He's playing with bum-ass Ryan Fitzpatrick. He had Alex Smith for a little bit. He had Dwayne Haskins who wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Dwayne Haskins is one of my all-time favorite straight up, but I can't front. The dude was a straight up bust and he's still getting it done. More so than DK Metcalf. Right? Not Maybe not the touchdowns, but that's where a lot of your shit comes from, schemes and all that, right? This guy right here, this is DK Metcalf for real. Now, he has six more games, but if you average it out, look at that. 15.5 yards per reception for Mike Evans here. Uh, he's another six foot five, 230-pound cat. He can run, maybe not run like DK Metcalf, 
but he's a much better route runner than DK Metcalf. He has better hands than DK Metcalf. He has 40, rece- 40 receiving touchdowns in that time period there, but you can just see it right here. And Jamar Chase, look, he's only 1,500 yards behind DK Metcalf, and he's only played half the games. Do you think if you double that, if you double that, right, he's in the 6,000 range, just like um, Mike Evans and um, of whoever that was, um, Mike Thomas, and he's trending like Justin Jefferson and all these guys. So come on, man. Uh, everyone's expendable at the wide, re- wide receiver position, in my my opinion, right? It's just one of those cut and dry positions. You get a guy like Puka Nakua coming in, absolutely killing. I'm going to have to add him to the list. Jordan Addison killing it. Zay Flowers and all these rookies like that. Like, come on. I could do Julio Jones. Uh, but he's from a, a different era than these guys. But all these guys, um, except maybe Mike Evans, right, mm- He's of this era. He's still got a long time to go to play as well because of his style of play there. But for the most part, all these guys at DK Metcalf's age, and as you see right there, they're all balling. They're all balling just like him, and some of them just straight up better. Matter of fact, all these guys straight up better if we're going stat for stat there. So if you want to do a blind stats comparison, what do you have there? And I'm pretty sure I'm missing some guys like Odell Beckham and all these guys like that. But hey, these are the first people that popped up in my head. So you have to let me know what you think about that. And it's not to disparage DK Metcalf. It's just to show you that there's different ways of going about this game. If DK Metcalf got traded and pulled in a huge haul, when you already have Jackson Smith and Jigba, already have uh, a Tyler Lockett, you already have three, four dope-ass running backs, right? You already have a young offensive line that's going to grow, and then you have that crazy-ass defense. Come on, man. DK Metcalf is not going to make or break anything. I'm sorry. DL traded. Randy Moss traded, right? Keyshawn Johnson was traded. It happens. It just is what it is. There's no knock on DK Metcalf. So stop overrating people and saying, like, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread, That acting like nobody else out there is producing like him. When there are... Tons of guys out there, or at least these elite level guys are out there producing just like him as well. Devontae Adams, I forgot about him. I'm pretty sure I can just right now start thinking of people and, and they pop in the head. I'm pretty sure they're trending right along that time period. So once again, DK Metcalf is a great player, but all those things that I named and put in there is the reason why I did that particular piece. And it was just a think piece. I don't think he's going to get traded. I just wonder, like, damn, if people are trading people. And you're able to get that because it's right. So it's, it's a receiving league of people like shiny receivers. You could fleece somebody for DK Metcalf, end up getting some superstar defensive player, a superstar. Somebody asked me about DK Metcalf and trying to fleece the, the Chiefs and get Chris Jones or somebody like that. And I was like, who in the hell would do that? Chris Jones don't grow on trees. These receivers are growing on trees these days. I hate to break it to you. Chris Jones is somebody who come in with the Seattle Seahawks. You would have to think that, man, they might be the favorite for the Super Bowl if they had a cat like that. Straight up. I, but let me know what you think about that, man. I know some people are still going to be pissed, and it is what it is, man. We're just talking ball here. We're not curing cancer. We're not curing world hunger. This is locker room talk. So if you can't handle it, you can't handle somebody from a different area than you who talk different or act different than you, then hit don't recommend channel. I'm not going to miss you, right? You're not going to miss me then, all right? Let's get it on. Um.